Hey, Can't Hike 55 here. I'm um, gonna be showing you my updated gear for uh, the JMT or pretty much any Sierra Trail. Anytime I go into the Sierras, uh, this is what I bring. Um, so I want to go a little bit more in depth about uh, you know the method to my madness. I uh, want to explain some of the reasons of why I take certain things and why I don't take certain things. Um, pretty much this is all I bring right here. I just wear this on my back and that's all I bring. I'm not an ultralight backpacker. I, I don't really care to be. The reason I go out there to hike any trail is to see what that trail has to offer and just to be in the outdoors and experience the beauty of being out in the outdoors. Um, I love camping, I love fishing, I love just hiking in general. Um, I, I'm not out there to, you know, I don't have a list of trails and I'm not out there to just check off the trails and run through them as quickly as possible. Uh, I'm out there to take my time and enjoy it because I enjoy being out there. So um, I want to begin by weight. Now, like I said earlier, I'm not, I don't consider myself ultra light, but for the gear that I do bring, it is pretty damn light. My pack ranges anywhere from, uh, it, it, it really fluctuates a lot between 25 pounds and like 32, 33 pounds, somewhere in there. Um, depending, and, and it all depends on the amount of food you have. And it depends on battery usage. You know, I'll start out with four sets of batteries, say, or three sets of batteries. Well, halfway through a long distance hike, such as the JMT, I'm not going to carry my dead batteries. As soon as I get to a resupply location or a trash can at a trailhead or something, those batteries are gone. There's weight saved right there. Um, food consumption, there's another weight save, saver right there. Um, toilet paper, baby wipes, I use baby wipes. As you go through those, those take off weight because they are wet a little bit and they really are kind of weighty, but I love having them. Um, so, you know, there's there's so many variables in the weight while you're out there uh, where the pack weight does fluctuate. You know, I don't care to get my pack down to 20 pounds. It doesn't matter to me. You know, um, when I first started hiking, I think Chris and I, when we started this seven years ago, we each had around 50 pounds on our backs. I mean, we were carrying the big green propane canisters the big square stoves that you buy at like Big Five or something. We didn't know nothing about backpacking or hiking. We just dove into it. Over the years, we have you know fine-tuned it to what gets taken, no matter what its weight, um, versus you know getting the lightest weight out of what you want to take. So um, we fine-tuned it over the years, and um, you know got our pack weight down to a comfortable weight that we were happy with carrying um, versus what we wanted on the trail. And that's what it's all about. For everybody, it's different. This gear video is not intended to tell you exactly what you should bring and what you shouldn't bring. This is what I bring. Um, this is what I like to have on the trail no matter what. And, and it, it's what I don't want to live without on the trail, basically. Before I show you my gear, I want to go over some things that, like I said earlier, that have saved me weight over the years. Things that I have learned uh, by reading uh, things online, watching other people's gear videos, and, and so forth. And um, so there's a couple things. I, I guess I'll start with these things right here. This is my sleeping bag stuff sack. To me, it's pointless. Um, I learned this uh, hiking with the PCTers last year, and um, they basically, and I'm sure a lot of people are starting to learn this, it's, it's, this is something that's really starting to get out into the hiking world, but um, you just, you know, stuff your sleeping bag down into your backpack. It's going to fill out all the voids that this doesn't, and the weight. Um, I've hiked with people over the years that have a stuff sack for everything, and I mean, I there was a guy that I hiked with, I think he probably had three pounds in stuff sacks, you know, and when you start adding up ounces, ounces turn into pounds. Your pack is your stuff sack. So get rid of stuff sacks. That's one way I've cut my weight over the years. 
Another way you'll notice is my cup that I drink out of and my jet boil, they don't have lids. Now I know that's a minute little amount of weight. It maybe the lids aren't even an ounce, maybe they're grams. But like I said, grams turn into ounces, ounces turn into pounds. Start shedding anywhere you can. So I don't bring lids. I don't need them. Some people might say, oh the jet boil has a strainer. Well, pour it more careful. Big deal. Save the weight. So there's another way I save weight. Then you really some some there's there's a lot of more obscure ways to save weight that that are staring people right in the face, and they probably don't realize what they can do. Um, so I what I did is I dissected every piece of gear, and I probably can do more. There's I'm sure there's a bunch of stuff that I've missed, but. Little things like, I, I was looking at, at this piece of gear right here. This is my filter from my platypus water filter that I carry. I don't use this to clamp onto the bottles. So, and that's what these gray things are for. Check it out. Done. Filter still works perfect. It's fine. Now, I'm without the weight of those two. Again, it's minute, probably maybe one ounce, maybe two ounces between the two of them, but gone. I'm carrying two sets of rechargeable batteries anyway, you know, and I, and I alternated them every day. One, one was charging, one was in the camera. And so I figured, well, I might as well get rid of the weight of this solar panel and this charger and just buy one extra set of AA batteries, which is lighter than this charging device and the panel and then between the three sets of fresh batteries I have 15 days and like I said there's so many other things that you can look at to save weight so because it, it really is all about saving as much weight as possible versus what you want to carry okay so there is all the gear that goes into my pack I guess we'll start with the pack first. It's a Osprey Exos 58. It's an awesome pack. It only weighs two and a half pounds. Let's go to my tent. My tent is the Big Agnes. I have the Fly Creek Ultralight one and the Seed House Ultralight one. Um, just depends on what one I bring. But uh, here's my tent, and and I wrap it in this Tyvek. This is actually keeps the tent because um, I wear the tent on the bottom of my pack. It keeps it waterproof in case it rains and it also acts as the um, the footprint so um, double purpose there then my sleeping pad is the Neo Air air pad it weighs 16 ounces one pound and is so freaking comfortable you can't even imagine and warm too um, and then my sleeping bag the workhorse that I've had on two JMT trips and every almost every single hike I've done uh, is my Kelty Cosmic down uh, 20 degree. So that's basically the sleeping arrangement. Okay, I'll move over to uh, my kitchen and my eating things here. I'll start with the platypus. Uh, this filter I've had on both JMTs 2012 and uh, 2013 last year. It's gone on Zion, it's gone on Grand Canyon, the H2L, and it's still kicking butt. It's lightweight, it's two four liter reservoirs, so we can actually carry the water with us if we wanted to, but in the Sierras you don't have to, but I just recently bought a new filter for it, so um, that filter lasted me two years. As before I mentioned, I used the jet boil. It is so efficient, I can have hot water in literally two minutes for anything that I desire. Pretty badass. Um, you know, all lightweight. My fold out spoon and my cup that I drink my tea and coffee in the morning out of. And I also use this. I try to keep this clean. I try not to eat out of this. Um, I, I'll eat my oatmeal or my cereal, drink my tea, drink my coffee all out of my cup right here. And then can of fuel, obviously. Bear canister. I buy the smallest bear canister that I can get away with. Um, and it's the smaller version uh, bear vault. Uh, you need a bear canister, it doesn't say what size, so I buy the smallest one. 
and anything that doesn't fit in there um, goes into my stuff sack, which used to be my sleeping bag stuff sack. I know I talked about stuff sacks earlier, but this is one case where you kind of kind of need one. So I put uh, you know all the extra food that doesn't fit in the bear canister into the stuff sack, and it gets hung by a tree. Now I'll move over to toiletries and first aid. Uh, I bring a little tiny first aid kit, which uh, basically just has some bandages, some alcohol pads, some Neosporin. I think I dissected this thing down and took, you know, 80% of the stuff that this thing came with out. Um, you know, you don't need 10 band-aids. Baby wipes. I don't carry toilet paper. I do everything with baby wipes. So, um, you know, it gets the job done, plus cleans a little extra and sterilizes, you know, out there on the trail. You kind of need that. Cotton balls and Q-tips. Um, Q-tips, obviously, obvious reason, clean your ears. The cotton balls we use for fire making. Um, I carry olive oil, so, you know, I'll take a couple of these, put some olive oil on the cotton balls, and it will burn for almost 10 minutes that way, and a really good fire starter, so, and lightweight, I mean, it doesn't weigh anything. Um, the knife actually gets carried in my pocket with my clothes, so I'm going to put it down there. Lighter for lighting my uh, jet boil and any campfires. A knee brace just in case on the downhills sometimes I'll just put this on even if my knees not hurting um, just to make sure that it doesn't hurt uh, various pills right there I carry in here I carry vitamin C's uh, 200 milligram ibuprofens and Tums so that's all mixed in there and that's what I do uh, with this this is my little tiny sewing kit um, inside I have a bunch of black thread and a couple of needles just in case something tears and I need to replace it. Here is my patch kit for the uh, Neo Air Air Pad just in case I get a hole there. Here's the uh, rope that hangs the extra food bag over the tree or for any other emergency purposes. Um, soap. Need some camp soap out there. Sponge and small little toothpaste and compact toothbrush. And that's basically the toiletries. Uh, one other thing about the tent, too, um, you know, the stuff sack thing. <laughs> Again, people take their little stuff sack that comes with the uh, tent stakes, but they put their tent stakes in the stuff sack, and, 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 you know, they put the poles in the stuff sack that the poles come with, and it's like, pointless. Wrap the poles up into the tent, done. I put these in the top pouch of my tent. No need to, you know, carry them in a stuff sack. And then uh, here is my pole that I use. It's telescoping out to six feet. Pretty compact and lightweight, as you can see by me holding it. It's really not that big when it's folded up. My little tackle box, and this is not heavy at all. I use one thirty-second ounce lures in there, and I only carry about five at a time with those little plastic worms. I mean, this is probably, I would say, four ounces right now, even with the container, all that. So between the reel and this, for my entertainment of fishing out there, is probably right around one pound. And I got the smallest reel they make. Look at that. Thing is micro. You know? Look at how small that thing is. Um, two pound line because it's not like you have big giant fish in the Sierras. And then anyway, I'll move over to my electronics here. Um, I recently added a GoPro camera. So that's going to start being used. It was used on my H2L hike. Um, and is an awesome camera. This thing... <laughs> Got a lot of flack from Will on the H2L hike for using this. Um, but basically it attaches the GoPro and this thing, it's its really a, a squeegee stick. And I stole it from my wife, but I think it's about 22 inches long right now. And it extends out to 54 inches, so I can get those really high up shots or, you know, whatever. I carry two extra... SD cards for the L820 that I'm shooting this video with right now that you can't see. This thing has a 64 um, gigabyte card in it and it gives me nine plus hours of record time so I don't need to carry any extras of those. I uh, have a battery inside of that and I carry two extra GoPro batteries um, for that. This is a lens cleaner for obviously my lenses. Very lightweight, bought it at Walmart for 10 bucks I think. Um, this came with my go my uh, solar panel. It is it stores battery power, and I can plug it in 
to basically any electronic that I carry, if I need some extra juice and I run out, um, this will give me some extra backup power. It's very light. I carry it just in case. Tripod for uh, the GoPro. You can see the GoPro attachment on the top there. Everything has GoPro attachments on them. Um, the Actually, the L820 that I'm shooting this right now, on the bottom of it also has a GoPro attachment so that I can interchange my cameras onto any mount seen here. Um, my headlamp, my wrist watch that I wear, so I'll put that down there. My little MP3 player, small, lightweight, compact. My earbuds, sunglasses that I wear. And there's two extra set of batteries that I carry, double A's, for the L820 to the clothes I carry in my pack. Um, obviously I carry my down jacket, highly compressible, lightweight. Um, I also use this as a pillow at night, so it actually has dual purpose. Um, keep me warm and a pillow at night. Uh, beanie, keep me warm. A micro fleece for if it's a cold day, I hike in my micro fleece. And it's also awesome to sleep in. Sometimes I'll sleep in this too. Um, extra pair of socks extra pair of underwear. I have wool socks that I wear to bed at night and I it's nice to feel cotton after you walk in synthetic materials all day long so here is my uh, thermal that I sleep in and I bring a lightweight pair of flannel pajamas to sleep in too so here's what I sleep in thermals flannel pajamas and wool socks it really adds a lot of warmth to the sleeping bag makes it makes it actually too hot sometimes um, so moving over here, this is what I wear on the trail. Um, on any given day, I got Morel uh, boots. I don't, I don't know if it's pronounced Morel or Merrill. I've heard both. So anyway, I uh, bought these boots. I've broke them in pretty nicely on the H2L hike, which killed me. Uh, it's almost looks like they have two JMT hikes on them. That's how hard, hard that hike is. Uh, obviously, a pair of socks. The other pair of underwear, my hiking shirt, my hiking pants, my wristwatch that I wear, the knife I carry in my pocket, and my hat that I um, probably see most of the scenes I'm wearing this in my videos. And uh, like I said, sometimes if it's a cold day, I'll just layer up with my micro fleece. And then every night what I try to do, and it's possible in the Sierras, but some of the desert hikes it's not, but every night when I get to camp, I wash my feet and then I wash the underwear and the socks that I was wearing that day and I put this fresh pair of dry ones on and while those ones that I was wearing that day dry overnight and if they need additional drying I'll just hang them on the outside of my pack during the next day and they're dry by the time I get to camp so every night I have a clean pair of underwear and a clean pair of socks oh and forgot a rain poncho it's really lightweight and so that's my new rain poncho right there so that's basically everything right there. It looks like a lot, but it really isn't. Okay, so now I have kind of consolidated everything into the compartments that they will go into my pack. And, you know, like, uh, my GoPro is in this case right here. The tent goes on the bottom on the outside of my pack. Um, these things right here will go on the compartment that is underneath my lid. These are the items that I don't need on a day-to-day -day basis. They're kind of emergency and backup things. So I don't need access to them. So I put them on the compartment that is underneath my lid. The little tripod and the base mount and my rain poncho uh, fishing pole and tackle will go in the outside pocket here so I can get to it very easy whenever I want to fish. All this stuff right here will go in the top lid. These are things that I want to be able to get to quickly, but they're, you know, smaller items, and I just want to keep them in a compartment, so top lid items there. This will go into a side pocket, zipped up, and then I consolidated. I put the spoon in the cup and the cup in the jet boil, and I put the stove actually on it. This goes into the bag along with the fuel. So that'll all be in the bag there. Um, and that is basically it. And then my uh, sleeping pad also goes in the other side pocket here. Um, 
the method to packing that I use is I try to get these outside pockets, uh, this quick one here and this outside pocket and this outside pocket. I get the things into there first because if you fill the sleeping bag up first, it's a bitch to get everything into these and get them all zipped up. So, And then there's all the stuff that will be stuffed into the main compartment of the pack right there. And I have removed the things that I am going to be wearing. You know, the clothes, so all this does not go into the pack. So it's set aside. Okay, now I'm going to show you how everything fits into my pack. Um, like I said earlier, first I start with the side pockets and the outside pockets, and then I'll stuff the main compartment and do the lid last. Um, so, here we go. Buckle up. It's all done. What I'll do is I'll just uh, put the GoPro case um, on the hip belt when I put it on. It's got a little strap back here that'll go through it. It'll be right here on my hip. So that's it right there. That's everything. Okay, so for food, I just basically come over here to the fridge, you know, and open it up and, you know, I take like sirloin steaks and, uh, you know, I'll grab some of these jalapeno poppers and, you know, microwavable stuff, some ice cream sandwiches, um, you know, I'll take a gallon of milk with me, some eggs and some butter and some fresh fruit here, some yogurt, you know, um, and that's basically, you know, what I bring out on the trail. Yeah, right. Seriously? That's everything I bring on the trail. I don't have the quantities here, but this is every food item that I do bring. And I got them separated into uh, breakfast right there. I got lunch and snacks right here. And I have dinner right there. And drinks right there. And then like uh, miscellaneous spices and other drinks. And I'll kind of go through it with you. Morning's real simple. Actually, every day I always start out with an instant breakfast and a Starbucks instant coffee because it gives me all of the vitamins and minerals that I'm probably going to be lacking out there. So every morning, start with that, and then I will either go to a Mountain House breakfast such as that, or they also make the uh, egg burrito fajita type wrap things that you can buy also, um, or I'll go to Hot Oatmeal. Or I'll go to cold cereal, which is not up here, but there's all my cereals. So I'll pack, you know, a couple days of those. And then uh, for snacks, that's where a lot of the food comes in because I hate eating the same snacks and the same lunch every day. And over the years, I've found this stuff to be some of the best and, you know, lightweight. Um, I'll start with snacks. Now... On the high passes in the Sierras and, you know, Mount Whitney, um, uh, Forrester Pass, Glen Pass, all the high passes that are, you know, over 12,000 feet, um, you start bonking out real quick up there. And I've found over the years that my go-to is these banana chips right here and obviously a, a, some type of Gatorade or a Gatorade chew right here always gets me through. Um, hands down that always pulls me out when I feel like I'm about to bonk um, can't get enough chocolate on the trail I actually do a candy bar every single day for a snack and a cliff bar so 
if I'm going out for seven days, I'll have seven seven different types of cliff bars and seven different types of uh, candy bars. And then at night, I like to have a cookie and I'll alternate. Um, I'll do Chips Ahoy and then I'll probably do like a chocolate covered graham cracker. Uh, it's like a little dessert at night. Uh, beef jerky, go to always. Um, do a half pound of uh, salami. And the nice thing, they sell the salami already sliced up, but as soon as you open that, it goes bad. If you, when you open this, um, and it stays open for, you know, three, four days, just the part that's facing the air goes bad, and you can cut that chunk off, and then the rest of it inside is still good. So these, I've found, stay good longer, um, you know, to eat. So, And I'll usually eat those with, uh, you know, some Ritz crackers, and maybe some Parmesan cheese, and then you know my little grater for when I have a mountain house spaghetti, which I don't have on the table, I got the chili mac, but at night I'll have the spaghetti and I'll grate my Parmesan cheese in it, or I'll use it uh, for lunch, like I said, with the salami and the crackers. And I'll alternate too, um, sometimes I'll use the crackers with the peanut butter, and uh, you know, make wraps with peanut butter, make wraps with the salami, the cheese, um, whatever. I like to chew on hard candy as I'm hiking, so I bring some Jolly Ranchers. Um, trail mix is always good. These are golden. And then uh, fully cooked bacon is awesome. Make wraps with those too, also with the Parmesan cheese. You can also put it in uh, your dinner at night, um, which is really tasty. For the dinners, I keep it real basic. It's Mountain House. You know, they got all different kinds of flavors of Mountain House. I just shown you the chili mac, but I mean, here's what I'm bringing on my next hike, which is the PCT coming up in about uh, four days. We're leaving, me and Chris are leaving on section A of the PCT, doing 114 miles from the Mexican border to Warner Springs, but there's all of the uh, different varieties I'm bringing. So I alternate between those, and uh, sometimes I just feel like a top ramen that night, or some instant potatoes. And that's where the spam comes in, um, and also the bacon. So if I'm having ramen or the potatoes, sometimes I'll break up the spam inside of it for some meat substance or the or the bacon, like I said. Drinks. Um, this bottle, uh, th this Powerade bottle, I always buy a Powerade bottle to start with, and this remains my main drinking source throughout the whole hike. Um, you know, I wash it out. Uh, probably every other day and then but this is what gets filled back up with water every morning when I start and it, This is what I drink out of throughout the day um, Gatorade packs little singles packs um, I bring some instant teas for some different flavored stuff at night Sometimes I like to have a hot tea so I bring decaffeinated tea so I don't stay up all night and then powdered milk um, I use that when I eat the cold cereal in the morning or I'll use it to thicken up my oatmeal or um, actually you know the powdered milk is really good for thickening up anything if you make your potatoes too runny your uh, your instant potatoes you can just add some of that it'll thicken it up and let's see what else um, I carry olive oil as you saw earlier about the cotton balls um, so I carry this for two reasons one is for that and the second is for the fish that we catch um, after we gut them we put some olive oil and spices and that's why the foils in there to we wrap the fish in the foil throw them on the coals of the campfire that night and that's the best eating you can get right there um, and then what I'll do is I'll put all of my drinks this is the teas and the coffees and so forth and the Gatorades all in one little baggie keep them kind of consolidated and then uh, here I always carry a full thing of garlic because I like fresh garlic in almost all my meals um, well not breakfast but dinners um, usually I'll cut up a, a clove and uh, this adds so much flavor out there and then I always have a baggie of kind of these little condiments um, when I go to fast food places all you know there's Del Taco I've got mustard in there I've got other hot sauces in there um, the mustard I use for my wraps for lunch you know my salami wraps or or bacon wraps or whatever and um, I also have a you know, Chick-fil-A, the Chick-fil-A sauces, I love those in uh, the Mountain House dinners. Some uh, like the beef stew especially and the, uh, the uh, beef stroganoff, these mix those in, one of those in. Oh, it makes it so much better. And um, 
I also have a spice bottle that is not in here, but I carry a little extra spice bottle too that goes in here, so that's my spice bag. And then also there's honey in there for my tea at night, so. Um, that's basically it though. That is everything that I bring on the trail with me. Um, another trick too that I want to stress to people is what I do with these mountain houses, I don't carry all these mountain houses. I mean, those two alone, you know, and then those four over there, it's just, they're, they're too heavy and they're too uh, bulky. So what I do is I empty all of these mountain houses into quart sized baggies. They all get their own little baggie here. And, you know, much more compact, lighter, everything. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll carry just one of these pouches folded up empty and I'll make whatever dinner that I'm having or breakfast in that pouch. Saves weight and room. Um, another thing I do, the reason why my jet boils on here is because at night when, when it's done simmering, say I'm going to cook the chili mac, I'll heat the water up, I'll pour the contents out of the bag back into the package pour the bo boiling water in there, zip it closed, let it sit for the 10 minutes it needs to. Then I'll take the bag that it was in and I will line my pot, my jet boil pot with it, fold the sides over and then that way and then when this is done simmering I'll pour it back into here and eat it and when I'm done it's nice and clean. Almost everything gets repackaged. This beef jerky pack right here, everything will go in baggies. This goes in a baggie right here. Um, these inside these boxes if you open them the bacon is actually inside of a pouch that's ziplocked so this cardboard gone um all this will get repackaged into baggies this will get repackaged into baggies um the powdered milk i keep in there because i don't want powdered milk everywhere so and these are pretty durable little bags ziploc bags that the powdered milk comes into and um yeah that's basically it actually the potatoes too i'll repackage the potatoes Ramens will stay in. I'll crush them. I'll crush the ramens so they kind of can mold around the food and stuff. These will stay in their pouches. They're real skinny and lightweight. So that's basically it. That is my food that I take on pretty much every hike that I ever do. So um, that's basically it. That's all my gear. That's my food. That's what gets me through a hike. And with about five days of this food and all the gear that you saw earlier packed into my pack, the camera gear, everything, I'm right at around 32, 33 pounds, give or take. Sometimes I have six days of food. So it just depends on the hike, how many days of food I'm carrying, how many batteries I have, all that good stuff. So, um, And like I said at the beginning of this, um, this, you know, I've tailored this for me over the years. This is what I'm happy with. This is what I'm comfortable with. Uh, some people want to go lighter. Some people want to bring extra comfort. Everybody has to tailor their own thing, so... Uh, to all you sticklers out there that want to get on me for bringing certain bounce of gear, you're not me. This is what makes me happy. This is what I want to carry. Later.